Hello and welcome to the Crocker Art Museum in Sacramento, California. I'm Jamie Yar, curator of the exhibition Twinka Tebow and the Art of the Pose, which I'm here to talk a little bit about with you today. I'm very excited about this exhibition because Twinka Tebow and I work together on it very closely. This exhibition is open through September 11th and is the first to feature the artist modeling career of Twinka Tebow, which spans from her earliest years, the 1940s, all the way to 2022. Twinka Tebow is the daughter of renowned artist Wayne Tebow, and she started her modeling career working with her father. At first, he would sketch her as a small child playing or sick in bed. Then she started to model more professionally as she moved into her teen and adult years, working with photographers, primarily in the 1970s and 1980s, and then moving into a more collaborative phase of her career in the 2000s, which expanded to working with various photographers, painters, those who focus on watercolor or drawing, and expanding her network of West Coast-based experimental artists, including many women artists. One of the most exciting things about this exhibition is that we have artwork from every decade of her life and career, from the 1940s all the way through the 2020s. The exhibition starts out here in the entryway to the galleries with ephemera. You're going to see some of the family photos and early photos from Twinka's life, her high school graduation photos, um, photos of her with her parents when she was a baby. And then if you move into the first gallery of the exhibition, you'll start in the 1940s, moving through the 1950s and 1960s with work by her father. So it's the Wayne Tebow section of the show. The exhibition is chronological, so you can move with Twinka through her life and career. We go through the 1970s and 80s and then move to our second gallery when we hit the 2000s, thinking about the more collaborative, somewhat more theatrical, more expressive, and more confident and poised section of Twinka's career. She is still working today. She plans to continue working into the future, and it's a very exciting exhibition for us, thinking about how 100 works in various media are representing the same individual. One of the most interesting things about Twinka Tebow in The Art of the Pose is that the exhibition is in roughly chronological order. So when you enter the show, you're going to start off looking at Twinka's work with her dad, Wayne Tebow. This again spans from the earliest years of her life until she is roughly 18, a teenager. And I wanna show you one work right to my side here that is incredibly important also to the Crocker Art Museum's history. This is Twinka from 1951. It is a portrait by her father. This was Twinka's first formal posing experience. She actually worked with her dad in a collaborative process to pose for this painting. She talks about how her dad's studio was in a converted chicken coop and it, it got a little bit hot in there, the paints were really smelly, and really at the age of six, she wasn't necessarily ready to sit for long stretches of time. She emerged from this experience saying that she absolutely never wanted to work as an artist model again and that she didn't think she had done a very good job. But when the painting went on view in 1951 at the E.B. Crocker Art Gallery in Wayne Tebow's first solo exhibition, she was absolutely thrilled. She got the idea that she could be seen in the gallery's walls, that she was the girl in the frame. And this became a lifelong passion for her to move into modeling, not only for her dad as she continued to grow, but then professionally as she entered the uh, kind of adult years of her life. So that's what we're looking at here, 1951 Twinka, one of those early portraits. One of the wonderful things about Twinka Tebow and the art of the pose is that Twinka and I work together extensively on the exhibition. Everything from initial conversations about the show, thinking about which artworks would make the best visitor experience, the themes involved in the exhibitions, and also learning all about Twinka's life history, her personal stories, and some of that inside scoop behind some of the works of art. She also loaned numerous works for this exhibition, for which we're absolutely grateful. 
I want to talk a little bit about Twinka's career as she enters the 1970s. When she moves into her early 20s, she's out on her own, living her life, and she meets the photographers Judy Dater and Jack Wellpot at a party in 1970. They were much engaged in creating a photographic book in which they photographed the same subject from two different perspectives. So this was always a gendered perspective as well. So Judy Dater's perspective through her eyes and Jack's perspective, Jack Wellpot, through his eyes. So they were very interested in Twinka's look. They thought that her clothing was very interesting, her style was very interesting, her confidence, her poise, and they offered to have her be part of this book project and Twinka agreed. And that became the start of her professional modeling career and specifically working with photographers. Now, two of the iconic images in this exhibition that are also in the Crocker's permanent collection are on either side of me here. These are images by Judy Dater. The work on the right-hand side is Imogen and Twinka at Yosemite. You may have seen this image before, very much iconic. This was taken at an Ansel Adams workshop all about working with artist models in the landscape and it was at Yosemite. So Twinka was one of many models that day working with a group of photographers in the Yosemite landscape. She talks about the fact that there was a little bit of chaos and a lack of structure with this photography workshop. So she found that Judy Dater and Imogen Cunningham, the photographer who in her own right is famous as well, were off to the side and Twinka found that there was a little bit of chaos with the other photographer she kind of found her way over to Judy Dater and Imogen Cunningham. And Judy Dater decided to set up the shot uh, at the tree. And Twinka went to be part of that shot. So it was very much a, a posed, deliberate experience, although it looks very much like Twinka is caught off guard by Imogen Cunningham kind of circling around the tree. Now this photo is also iconic in the sense that it was the first full frontal nude to be published in Life magazine. And we have that Life magazine issue in the exhibition as well. And that magazine was all about remarkable American women from 1776 to 1976. On this side of the wall, we have another Judy Dater image, and this is Twinka in kind of the hollow of a redwood tree. And Twinka talks about the fact that she was crouched very low, she was straining, it was a very intense moment, and Judy really set up the shot, waited till that pose was absolutely perfect, um, and then that was the click and that was the image. So these two from the early 70s are very much part of that impetus for Twinka to continue working with photographers and very much part Part of one of the key themes of the exhibition, which is the body in nature or thinking about the way that models work in landscapes. The 1970s were a prolific time for Twinka Tebow in her artist model career. She worked really extensively with photographers during this period. She started working with Jack Wellpod and Judy Dater and then gained references from there. So she worked with famed photographers Ralph Gibson, with Echo Hosoe, with uh, Pete Salutos, as well as Arnold Newman. And in the mid-1970s, as she was trying to make it as an actress in Hollywood, she also met the writer Henry Miller. He had suffered a pretty significant stroke and became fast friends with his daughter Valentine. And Twinka ended up um, working for him as a caretaker, as a cook, and helping to keep uh, his household in order. During her time living with Henry Miller, she worked with the photographer Arnold Newman, who came to Los Angeles to photograph both Henry Miller and Twinka. And she also worked with he Mary Ellen Mark, who you'll see in the center here. So this is Twinka and Henry Miller together at Henry's home in the Pacific Palisades. We also have on either side of me, if we look in this direction, a few works by our Michael Walker, and these were taken also in Henry's garden in the Pacific Palisades. Now, if you're not familiar with the writer Henry Miller, he was somewhat of a rebel writer. He wrote Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and was well known for his divergent writing methods as well as kind of pushing the boundaries of writing during his career and his heyday. In the exhibition catalog that accompanies the show, we have published a previously unpublished work by Henry Miller um, all about Twinka's career and their uh, very collegial relationship together.
In the late 1970s, Twinka Tebow has a daughter named Sierra. It was at this time that she decides to take a little bit of a break from being an artist model, and she starts her own professional catering business in Los Angeles. It's at a wedding that she meets the photographer John Rife Williams, and they become collaborators from there on out. They've been working together now for numerous decades, fast friends, and they really had an artistic vision that matched um, each other's eyes. It is in this portion of the exhibition that we also start to see a little bit of a shift, not only in terms of the way that Twinka is working with her artistic collaborators, but also in terms of the photographic styles and photographic processes used to create the works. So we move from silver gelatin prints and fairly traditional methods, straight photography, into methods of darkroom manipulation, and then eventually also into digital manipulation, color photography. And we start to see that shift here. It's also in the 1980s and then moving forward that Twinka wants to take more ownership over the types of images that are produced, how she's represented, how she utilizes her bodies to create different characters, how her body is represented in different settings and different scenes. And we start to see that here. This section of the exhibition references and sort of promotes John Rife Williams' early work with Twinka. You're seeing here the monster face series, which are superimposed images of Twinka's face. We also move away from the body itself. We see more of Twinka's face. We see more expressions. We see uh, more use of different props or costume type pieces in this section of the exhibition. We also start to see a larger scale. So the photography, as we move through time from the 70s into the 80s and then beyond, often becomes much larger. The prints are larger. They're much more striking in terms of their physical presence in the space. In the 2000s, Twinka works more collaboratively. She seeks out artists that she's very interested in working with, and they create a relationship together, thinking about the types of images they want to produce and how they're going to produce them. This includes work that's somewhat more theatrical, based in costuming and settings, different aspects of posing and being poised and confident. One of the amazing things about this exhibition is Twinka's confidence over time and the real focus on aging and how important that is to Twinka. I'm here with a few works in the second gallery of the show, which starts in the 2000s and goes all the way to 2022. These two works by Tammy Bahat, we're looking at The Encounter and The Elegy, are from 2022. Now, Tammy does all of the staging herself, Tammy Bahat. She thinks about the costuming in the work, the frames that will be on the photographs themselves. And Twinka was very interested in working with the live snake in the encounter and really putting forward a face of confidence and not fear. I love how many of these images also reference art history, thinking about the Baroque time period with the really strong light dark contrast, thinking about in the elegy, vanitas images, memento more, um, various symbols of death like a skull or an hourglass, the way that it's not only about Twinka's body, but also about the history, the expression, and the story that's being put forward. In the last section of the exhibition, we have large-scale works, photographs, as well as drawings. We're also thinking about references back to earlier periods in Twinka Tebow's career. We have Bradford Solomon's large-scale charcoal work here. That's a portrait of Twinka's face and includes quotes by Henry Miller, as well as this kind of free association by Solomon. It's a really interesting way of thinking about sketching Twinka and referencing different aspects of her earlier life and work. On this side of the gallery, we also have three images, one by Laurie Jo Daniels, which is a tin type created in 2020, in which case Twinka is wearing a mask while standing in front of a very large tree. In the center and then further down the line, we have two works by Michelle Magdalena. The work on the far end is called For Imogen, and it's a reference to that early image by Judy Dater of Twinka and Imogen Cunningham. In the case of the work of Michelle Magdalena, we've 
inversed or kind of reverted to different roles. So Twinka is playing the role of Imogen, completely covered head to toe, peeking around the corner at Michelle Magdalena, who crouches to one side. So some really fantastic images, thinking about different photographic methods with tintypes and gelatin silver prints, also thinking about large scale works like the Solomon that we see here. In the 2000s, Twinka formed friendships and working relationships with many women artists. She likes to talk about the idea of collaborating with women, seeing the whole body, the whole person, aging and progressing in very positive, encouraging, and confident ways. In the last section of the exhibition, you'll see work by Eileen Smithson, who you can see here with the cake image. You'll see work by Elizabeth Opelneck and Michelle Matei. You'll also see work by Susan Soybert, Judy Dater, and Kim Campbell. It's really a fun section of the exhibition because we're also thinking about digital manipulation in photography. We're thinking about overlaying of images, about abstracting or obscuring the body that was once so essential in the 1970s, and thinking about color and really this use of um, fun and energetic works in the exhibition. I just want to point out a couple of things here, especially Twinka with cake, which presents a really fun dichotomy between this garish cake in the foreground and Twinka obscured in the background. This idea of birthdays and aging and time progression of Elizabeth Opelneck and this abstraction through the use of color. Twinka Tebow and the Art of the Pose, 70 plus years of Twinka Tebow's career, all featured in over 100 works at the Crocker Art Museum.